Welcome friends and welcome to my channel Biology Notes. In this video, we will discuss about the structure of ear and mainly we will discuss the structure of external and uh, middle ear and in the next video, we will discuss the structure of internal ear. And the ear is the organ of hearing and this will also maintains the balance in our body. And since this is a sense organ, so this must contain the sensory receptor cell and the sensory receptor cells in the ear is known as hair cells and this is called as mechanoreceptor because this becomes activated by the sound wave. So the hair cell which are present in this sense organ is the sensory receptor cell and in each type of sense organs these sensory receptor cells are present. Okay, And these sensory receptor cells becomes activated by the environmental stimuli. And the sensory receptor cell of ear are activated by sound wave and this creates a receptor potential in this sensory receptor cell and then this receptor potential generates axon potential in the nerve which are synapsed with this sensory hair cell and this this information will go into our brain and so we can hear any sound from the surrounding environment so this is actually the basic mechanism of function of ear now to performing this function, the ear contains different part. The first part is the external ear. And external ear contains four regions or the four part. The auricle, first one is the auricle, ear lobe, and the external auditory canal and tympanum. Okay, so these are the four structure of external ear. The auricle, the auricle, this is the auricle, and this is made up of piece of cartilage and covered by skin. So cavity of the auricle is known as concha and concha receive the sound wave from surrounding environment and just beneath the auricle there are presence of flap of skin which is known as ear lobe. The sound wave which is captured by auricle will be transmitted into a canal which is known as external auditory canal and the external auditory canal ends in a membrane known as tympanic membrane. Then this is actually the end point of our external ear. Okay, So the tympanic membrane is the end point of external ear. And in external auditory canal, there are presence few uh, glands and these are known as the ceruminous wax gland. And the ceruminous wax gland is a modified soid gland and this will form a yellowish uh, chemicals and which is known as cerumen okay then the external ear capture the sound wave from the auricle and this convey the sound wave into the tympanum right then what will be the function of of the external external ear so sound wave sound wave from environment sound wave from environment will be captured will be captured by auricle and this sound wave enters into the external ear so external ear tube external ear tube okay and the sound wave then strikes on strikes on tympanic membrane then the tympanic membrane vibrate tympanic membrane vibrate actually tympanic membrane is the end point of external ear and this is thin, oval and the slightly stretched structure. Then the external ear contains these four parts, the auricle, ear lobe and the external ear tube and the tympanic membrane. Now the middle ear and middle ear contains a cavity which is known as tympanic cavity and the structure of the middle ear are present or the different parts of middle ear are present in this tympanic cavity. Tympanic cavity is connected with a tube which is known as eustachian tube and this eustachian tube connect the middle ear with the nasopharynx. Okay, so the eustachian tube goes into the nasopharynx then the middle ear will be connected with the nasopharynx with the help of this eustachian tube. And this tympanic cavity is also covered by the temporal bone then the temporal bone actually covered the middle ear and in the middle ear the three small bones are present the first one is malleus the second one is incus and the third one is stapes actually these are named due to their their shape the malleus 
Melius is hammer shaped. So Melius is hammer shaped. Then this is Melius. Incus. Incus is anvil shaped. Then this is Incus. And the stapes. Stapes is the smallest bone in our body. And this is actually stirrup shaped. Okay. And these small bones are articulated with each other. And these three small bones which is present, which are present in the middle ear are known as ear ossicle. These are known as ear ossicle. And this ear ossicle amplify the sound wave. They amplify the sound wave, sound wave up to 20 fold. They amplify sound wave up to 20 fold. Okay. Melias remains attached with the tympanic membrane in one side. And in another side, this attached with the incus or it is articulated with incus and the incus will be articulated with the stapes and which is the smallest bone present in human body. And in the tympanic cavity, there will be present two aperture. The one aperture is known as fenestra ovalis and this is the upper aperture of the tympanic membrane. The another aperture is a round window. This is the lower aperture of the tympanic membrane. Okay. And when sound wave strikes on the tympanic membrane, the tympanic membrane will be vibrated and this vibration transferred into this ear ossicle. Okay. And this ear ossicles actually causes the vibration of stapes and the foot of stapes are present in the fenestra ovalis. This is very, very important. Okay. Then the stapes will be moved. This will dance and this vibration will be transformed through the fenestra ovalis into the internal ear, right? Okay. Then the melias incus and stapes actually receive the vibration from the tympanic membrane. Then the tympanic membrane vibrates, tympanic membrane vibrates and this vibration transmit to the ear ossicle, ear ossicle and this causes the 20 fold amplification of this wave okay and the dancing dancing of stapes then dancing of stapes can be seen and this form a wave which transmit which transmit into internal ear transmit into internal ear through through fenestra ovalis, through fenestra ovalis. Then this is actually the function of middle ear. Actually, middle ear amplify the sound wave up to 20 fold. Okay. Then the sound wave, you can see the sound wave move from a huge area to the narrow passage. And when the sound wave move from the air into the external tube, then the passage, then the passage of the sound wave will be decreased. And this causes the convergence of the sound wave. Then this converged sound wave vibrate the tympanic membrane and this vibration again transfer into, into the structure. And this vibration again move in another narrow passage which is known as fenestra ovalis. Okay, the amplitude or the strength of the sound wave will also be increased. Okay, and this sound wave then enters into the internal ear. Now we will briefly discuss about structure of internal ear and in the next video we will discuss it elaborately okay internal ear contains three most important structure one is the semicircular canal another is vestibule and the last one is the cochlea okay and the semicircular canal is nothing but this is the semicircular structure and there are present three semicircular canal and these are perpendicular with each other then this is the semicircular canal okay and the next structure which is known as vestibule and in the vestibule an important organ is present which is known as otolith and this is the organs of balance so otolith helps us for balancing our body okay so the, so the otolith is present in the vestibule and the last structure which is very very important this is known as cochlea and you can see this is snail shaped structure so cochlea means snail then the cochlea is a snail shaped structure and in cochlea the organ of cortis is present and which receive which receive the sound wave okay 
and in the organ of cotti there are presence bacillar membrane and in the organ of cotti there are presence bacillar membrane and this bacillar membrane contains this sensory hair sensory hair actually internal air contains fluid and this fluid are two type the endolymph and the perilymph and when sound wave move from middle ear into the internal ear this vibrate this vibrate this fluid and this vibration will be transformed into this bacillar membrane which is present in the organ of cotti okay so the vibration will be transformed in the bacillar membrane which is known as organ of cotti and then this sound wave will be transformed into the organ of cotti and in the organ of cotti there are presence bacillar membrane and in the bacillar membrane the sensory hair are present okay and this vibration again vibrate this bacillar membrane and then the sensory hair actually move or sensory hair will be disturbed and this disturbance will be transformed into our auditory nerve and ultimately this will reach into the brain and then we can hear the different sound of environment okay then this is actually the basic structure of ear and the detailed structure of external and the middle ear and in the next video we will discuss about the detailed structure of internal ear which is very much critical and which is very much understanding okay and also we will be talking about the autolith structure and the organ of cotti and the structure of organ of cotti and where the sensory receptor cells are reside and what will be the mechanism of our hearing so thank you and that's it